Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm really glad to be here. This is a nice initiative. I like this conference. So I'm a little bit nervous. Hopefully it won't show. Um, but yeah, I'll do my best. You'll be a supportive audience, I know. <laughs> um, this is a strategy I have, so I gain confidence. All right. So my name is Pedro. Um, I come from Lisbon, Portugal. Um, I have been a designer throughout my whole career, but I've been designing very different things. Uh, I've designed, I helped design a museum, I helped design kitchen furniture, uh, backpacks, uh, other fashion accessories, uh, also e-commerce websites. So uh, I bring this perspective into the design work that I do. So I'm a newbie in, in open source, uh, so I'm learning, that's why I'm here also. And in that process, I'm hoping to share what I know or what I've experienced and maybe ignite some inspiration. Um, so I've always, uh, I've also been, um, as long as I've been working, a contribu generalist contributor to uh, open source software, um, mainly like um, doing translations, going to support forums, help around. So I like that part too. Lately, I've been involved with OwnCast on the Fediverse. I talked with Scott on Mastodon. Thank you for replying. I'm, I'm trying to uh, cross that red line, you know, that you talked about yesterday, uh, to, I don't know, try to use GitHub, for example, to provide design. Um, so I work at Percona. Um, Percona is an open source uh, based uh, company. They mainly started as uh, services company for databases and out of that to support that they started developing and releasing to the public uh, and opening up uh, some software packages so they have open source dropping we have drop open source dropping replacements for Postgres MySQL MongoDB uh, very popular the Percona toolkit and PMM per Percona Monitoring and Management, we call it PMM. It's very popular in this niche. Uh, and we also recently were trying to, uh, you know, release some cloud native solutions like the Kubernetes operators. And, uh, sorry, there's pictures of our team, but it's not complete. We're like 300. Um, so about the topic today, why, why why product adoption through documentation design? Why why not product adoption in product, right? Like better onboarding, things like that, like supporting the user throughout their journey inside the product. And we've been talking a lot about documentation because it is hard somehow. So our motivations to increase adoption is to bring in more people, more people to use, more people to provide support to each other, like um, small businesses supporting other small businesses. And leaving, for example, Percona with uh, expertise support in critical areas like, you know, um, medical industry, uh, banking, I don't know, things that are useful for societies and have really huge problems and we need to distribute things well, right? And we need to, we have this motivation to have more people in the database world. And why documentation and why not the product itself? Well, on top of design being hard, and software being hard, databases are actually super hard. Uh, they are technical, they're intimidating. It was for me. Uh, they have specific terminology, they, they are super abstract. Um, they lack user centricity by default. Um, and Percona, be, being 
uh, database centered and developing solutions for databases uh, isn't user centric enough or it wasn't as historically until we arrived. Um, so there's a lack in design culture inside the company and we want to improve that situation. And I've had this, this experience in the past of uh, concurrently having rapid software development and rapid user experience development synchronized. And it's a beautiful thing. We develop products really quick, usable from the get-go. But when structures are already implemented, it's not easy. Uh, like, and it, there's no user-centric voice, it's not easy. So while we develop, we, we, are, we didn't give up on our products. They are mainly CLI, uh, uh, so command line interface tools. They are already not intuitive by default. So while we develop some strategies, what else could we do now? So I want you to give you a picture why we went to um, documentation. So imagine assembling this by just guessing where each part fits. It's hectic. And to do this, uh, I always have to go to the instructions booklet, right? And even with the instructions booklet, uh, booklets, I managed to leave the doors chipped and ugly on IKEA furniture. I, I don't know how I can do that, but I can. I follow everything by the book. Still, I can make it wrongly. But imagine if I didn't have this, it would be hectic. So with documentation, we can promote the adoption and good use of products. And with databases, even if you're an expert, you must keep the documentation tab open all the time, even if the product is already you know, launched. You need to monitor the databases. You need to see, revisit the list of commands. You need that open. So we wanted to improve the experience in the documentation. So the first problem we detected is uh, there was no strategy for the documentation. Simply because we have software, we assume that we have to have documentation. That's it. We have software, we have documentation. There was no real strategy. So we were thinking how to solve this. Who's reading our documentation? How can it help them achieve uh, them and us the goals, the company goals, the team goals, the user goals? How do we know if it is helping? So we defined that. So here is like a summary but you can go as deep or as light as you want and define your own strategy. For us, it was, we want documentation to reach out to more developers interested in open source databases for their applications so that adoption increases through more installation, proper retention, and evident ease of use. So we wanted to do that. Also, another problem we had is that because documentation just exists, only a subset of uh, our team was dealing that in silo. Um, and we wanted to boost um, cross-collaboration, wanted to bring in more expertise. So on top of the tech writers and the marketing already involved, we kept the creation of the content itself, the management, and some of the data analysis. But we wanted to add some more speed, visibility, and openness, and show this all our results with the documentation with the whole team. And we wanted to um, bring in more user representation. So we brought in technical services, account managers, customer success, try to understand how they see the documentation. And with PMs, product, product management, 
we wanted to have more horizontally distributed, get more departments into the same goals. And you can have more people if you want, bring them to the party. And on our end, from the user experience, we brought a perspective that, a perspective that no one had, like uh, how to have a problem-solving uh, technique. Uh, Problem-solving techniques, uh, that's what I mean. So we brought that uh, perspective. We proposed solutions, like rapid solutions. Like we explore new tools. So on top of the analytics we already had, we were using uh, Google Analytics, but we thought, oh, how about using something more open, like post hoc? And we tried that. And uh, successfully, we are going to have more data signals not only like how many views, but for example, how is the user navigating on a page? Are they focused on something specific? How about seeing that? We want to have that visibility. And we wanted to boost the clarity on, on the documentation itself. So we wanted to ask, is the content accessible to people? Does it provide intuitive access to their needs? Are there untapped opportunities? So we, look, we looked into our websites, our websites. Actually, we had 17 of those uh, because we have 17 products. We have single separate websites for each product. So 17 documentation websites. They look like this, out of the box. We are using Material for MKDocs, which is a theme layer on top of Markdown Docs, MKDocs, which is open source, you can use it. Out of the box is already great, but you have a lot of alternatives, like DocuSaurus, Vit, Vit, Vit or Vitepress, um, Starlight, Markdoc, Docsify, there are many more. You can explore. Out of the box, all of them are already really great in terms of user experience, but we needed something else. So we did a UX analysis on top of the websites and tried to understand how to improve this. So we tweaked a little bit. So uh, Markdown Docs is really easy to fiddle around. You can like tweak the CSS, uh, you know, the HTML. You can extend it, you can put more stuff in it. So we applied more readable fonts. It was all geometric. We wanted to, we put a grotesque in it so it's more readable. Added more spacing, as you can see, it's more aired, more paused. You have no little moments of reading. And increase chromatic contrast. You can, can barely see the links. So we wanted to improve that. It's small changes, and this is fast to, to implement. You can do it yourself. I did it myself, just increasing, changing the color. Um, the reading contrast, now you can see the headings better, and apply it. Uh, you, we painted with uh, on-brand styling, it wasn't correct. Um, and we also added stuff like out of the box, Markdown Docs allows you, to, at least the material theme, allows you to do a lot of more, a lot more. So, uh, for the maintainers, we try to help them because they don't have as much visual confidence to move things over and apply icons and stuff. We created guidelines for them to how to apply icons, buttons, and when when to drive the users to the right moment and the right time to another journey if they need. And we extended the theme, like we had like some chunking admonitions, rectangles, and we tried to do these little stuff that, you know, to not drive as much, much attention because all we could see is admonitions. Um, and we also extended with more banners and stuff like that. We also wanted to unify the experience. As I said, we had like 17 websites and they 
the traffic all came from our main website, which is like two was like navigating between two alternative realities. Like you were in the in the sea of marketing blurbs, and then you would go to a product, install it, then you return to the marketing sea, and then you had to return to another documentation site. So it created a new a new home page. So the user could navigate through uh, like the main elements, the main products, and try to understand what they want. And then they could like navigate to MongoDB. And then if they successfully install it, go back to the main page and then continue their journey. So, and on top of this, we wanted to improve the experience. So uh, we did more than just this. So we experiment a bit also. We did A-B testing. We tried to understand, does the navigation work better on top or on the sidebar? We actually found out that both on top and sidebar wouldn't work well together. So we decided, OK, let's just use the side navigation and create guidelines to help write the navigation. Because there was like three lines for the same link of navigation, which is hectic. It's a lot of links, a lot of dense text, and we wanted to avoid that. So we helped create guidelines and create some small tweaks on the content. So you have a, a visual expression on the steps that you want to perform to, for example, install a product. And on top of that, with the buttons and iconography and things like that, we also wanted to create journeys. Like once you arrive on a main page, uh, we created like the main use cases for that product. Like, do we want to install it? How about review the security? It's like I brought the perspective of e-commerce where they try to mimic the experience in store. And it's the same here. It's like, hey, welcome. This is documentation. What can I do for you today? Do you want to install it? Do you want to review the security? It's right here. Or, you know, you do that experience with the users. You be polite, have a polite language, and you guide them. After you install, you say, hey, what about next? Do you want to create a database? Sure. It's, the link is here. Alternatively, you can do this, that, and you know you drive the users. So overall, so far, what we did is not yet super launch. It's in it's brewing like this, as I told you, like like I explained. But we, I'm just going to review what we did. So we defined a strategy. So everyone has consensus. We established co-ownership, brought more expertise into the documentation. Uh, we made it clearer, more accessible, improved the user experience, and unified the experience. So we made the website feel as a whole and boost that aesthetic usability effect. You know, like if it looks good, it's probably going to work. Um, and that, that actually kind of worked. People are fooled with that. Um, and to do, we have more stuff to do, obviously, because while we are digging through this, we find more problems. So we have to see how users are reacting to this. We have to review outdated content that we found uh, without inconsistencies, because we have 17 websites, and we want to merge them more and had practical examples, which are always useful. So this is just the beginning. So if you want to discuss more of this, please reach out. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, we'll take any questions, if people have any at this point. All right. Just one second. Um, so my question is about, like, you can create whatever documentation uh, you want for a product, but what the users will do is dive deep in and just start breaking things up and you know actually using the product. So how do you actually get 
users to try out uh, documentation or how you reroute them to you know, use documentation before actually beginning to use the product? How, how do we um, in, incite users to yeah. view the documentation first? Yeah. Yeah, so the, um, basically to install these kind of products, you have to use the quick start guides. You need a set of commands. You cannot do it otherwise. You can download the files, but there will be no help on the product itself to in, how to install it. It's not like an executable kind of thing. And uh, mostly, uh, it, this is on the marketing side more, or on the website experience, where we drive, uh, and, uh, and on the homepage, we drive users to the quick start guide always, and provide the link to the files later on. Yeah, so we prioritize, to answer bluntly, we prioritize the quick start guide linking. Okay, I think we're about out of time. We have to move on. It's actually, it was, I was told it was 425. We have There's a question there. I think we have four minutes. And so, and Sorry, I took too, too long. Thanks. I like the, um, the slide where you put like uh, the documentation in a circle with the user experience uh, information, the product management, and then that goes to the marketing and tech writing. Yeah. And uh, at Kaleidos, we are having this uh, issue that as the product uh, develops, uh, the features are getting more, more and more complex. So the comms team uh, need more time to understand, OK, how can we explain this? No? Uh, and we are figuring out how to make uh, like internal briefings so mm -hmm. we get as much information as we can from the product team to be able to create stories and all the, the content. So m my question was, if you are having like a specific process to um, to have this information in a specific format to deliver to the marketing and, and tech writers, or, or is just the same process, but uh, it's just a way of making it easy for everyone to get that information. When you mean information like collaborating between all of the departments? Yeah, yeah. so, uh, uh, well, we all, we simply invite them, like, uh, okay. we, we talk with them, uh, like, a lot, and we tag them when it's, like, asynchronous. We tag them all the time to see, hey, look at this, please. Uh, it doesn't always work, but um, we insist. Um, and it has to work. <laughs> uh, otherwise, the goals are not met. But... Um, I think uh, we should break like the barriers, like uh, invite them as early as possible. So whatever we do in documentation, at least in terms of design, is very open. And we also always ask between each step when do you use their testing or something like that and have results or have a new design, even if it's a wireframe, we nag people to have a look. Okay, I'm afraid we have to so, wrap up, but thank you very yeah, much. Thank for that. you. Can we give him a big hand of applause.